Have you ever noticed why capacitor banks in power systems are almost always connected in delta and not in star? I mean, we use both delta and star configurations in electrical engineering, but when it comes to capacitor banks, especially for power factor correction in substations or industrial systems, delta is the go-to connection. Why is that? Let's break it down. First, let's think about what a capacitor bank actually does. It supplies reactive power to the system, and reactive power is essential to support voltage and improve power factor in the network. Now here's the key part, how these capacitors are connected determines how much reactive power they can actually supply. In a delta connection, each capacitor is directly connected between two lines, so it gets full line voltage across it. You can think of it as a capacitor connected in parallel across two phases. That's why in delta, each capacitor experiences the full line-to-line -line voltage. But in a star connection, each capacitor is connected from one phase to the neutral point. Now, if you want to look at how the system behaves line-to-line, -line, the combination becomes a series connection of two capacitors. This is because the line-to-line -line voltage appears across two branches of the star, one from each phase to neutral. Now, when two capacitors of equal value are connected in series, their equivalent capacitance gets halved. That is, if each capacitor has a capacitance of C, then the series combination becomes C divided by 2. So, in star connection, the effective capacitance across two lines gets reduced, which directly reduces the reactive power supplied, because reactive power is proportional to capacitance. That's why delta connection gives a much better reactive power output from the same capacitor units. Let's take a simple numerical example to see this more clearly. Suppose we have a three-phase, 132 kilovolt system, and let's assume we use capacitors of 10 microfarads in each phase. First, let's calculate the capacitive reactance. Reactance Xc equals 1 divided by 2 pi Fc, where F is the system frequency, which is 50 Hz. Substitute the values, 2 pi into 50 into 10 microfarads. That's 2 pi into 50 into 10 into 10 to the power minus 6. That gives Xc approximately equal to 318.3 ohms. In a star connection, each capacitor is connected from phase to neutral. So the phase voltage will be line voltage divided by root 3, that is 132,000 volts divided by root 3, which comes out to approximately 76,210 volts. Now reactive power per phase is V squared divided by XC, that is 76,210 squared divided by 318.3, which gives approximately 18.25 megavolt ampere reactive per phase. Multiply that by 3 for the total. 18.25 times 3 gives 54.75 megavolt ampere reactive in star connection. Now in delta, each capacitor is connected across two lines, so it gets full line voltage. So V phase is equal to 132,000 volts. Reactive power per phase becomes 132,000 squared divided by 318.3, which gives approximately 54.75 megavolt ampere reactive per phase. Multiply by 3 for total, and we get 164.25 megavolt ampere reactive in delta connection. So delta gives 3 times the reactive power compared to star connection, using the same capacitors and same line voltage. That's a massive difference. And it doesn't end there. In delta, if one capacitor unit fails or is removed for maintenance, the other two still form a closed path and continue to supply reactive power. But in star, the loss of one leg makes the whole bank unbalanced and less effective. Also, delta doesn't require a neutral connection, which is often not available in high-voltage substations. That makes installation simpler. So, the delta connection is simply more efficient when it comes to power factor correction. It allows each capacitor to operate at full line voltage, maximizes reactive power output, and maintains better system reliability. The ability to continue operating even if one unit fails, and the elimination of the need for a neutral wire. Both these features make delta the obvious choice in real-world capacitor bank applications. That's why, in most practical systems, be it substations, industrial power factor panels or utility networks, you'll always find capacitor banks connected in Delta. Now it's your turn. Have you ever seen a capacitor bank connected in Star? Or maybe you've come across a special scenario where Star was used intentionally? 
I'd love to hear your experience, so do share it down in the comments. Also, if you found this explanation helpful, please like, share and subscribe to Electrology for more such clear and practical explanations in electrical engineering. And hey, if you really want to support this channel, you can click the thanks button below the video to contribute. Or even better, hit that join button to become a member and get exclusive perks like early access, shoutouts and priority replies. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, stay curious and keep learning with Electrology.